Are you on the brink of releasing your app onto the app store? Don't make the mistake of rushing it out the door. Now, taking the time to actually test your app thoroughly can be the difference between a top rated app and one that's doo doo. <laughs> and in this video, I'll be showing you everything that you need to know when getting started with Test Flight so you can have the best app on the app store. We're all trying to retire in Bali, right? So let's get this money. <laughs> Now, the first thing you want to make sure that you have is two things you want to check, right? So the first thing you'll need is you're going to need an Apple ID and an iPhone so you can actually sign in and use Test Flight. Then after that, you're actually going to need an Apple developer account. Now, there's two types you can have. It's either a individual or a corporation. So depending on your needs, you'll want to choose that one. Now, I cannot stress enough. But honestly, if you don't do this, it's going to add some years onto you. But make sure that in Xcode, you actually add your team into Xcode and I'll just show you that now. In Xcode, you want to make sure you go to settings and then on the accounts bit here, you want to hit the plus button on the bottom here and sign in here with your Apple ID. So sign in here to link your Apple developer to Xcode. If you do not do this, trust me, your skin will not be glowing anymore. <laughs> so make sure you do that. We've done all that now. So what we want to do now is actually sort out our project's bundle identifier. So the best way to think about a bundle identifier is it's basically just like a unique tag for each app that you build. So this project I have here, if we actually go to our Xcode project and then we go here to the general tab, you'll see something here called bundle identifier. Now the usual format that you have here is it's com dot your team name dot your app name so you want to try and you know follow that structure now you'll see this other tab called sign in capabilities now right now i actually have this set to automatic and you can see that i have my team selected here because i've done this what xcode will do is it will automatically register this bundle identifier for me on appledeveloper.com uh, now, if I didn't do this, I'd have to actually go to AppleDeveloper.com and register the bundle identifier. But for this, we're going to be lazy and let Xcode do all the work for us. So we're going to leave that automatic. Now we're getting to the meaty bit, right? <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> so how do we actually put this onto test flight? Well, what we want to do is actually archive our build. This catches out a lot of people. So make sure you do this step. So on the toolbar here, so you want to make sure that on the drop down, you choose any iOS device. And then by doing this, you're now actually able to archive your project. So if we go to our window here and we just basically go to product and then archive, this will actually now start to archive and basically package up my app. Now my app is quite small, so this is going to be pretty quick. Like this is lean, like leaner than tofu, right? So it's going to be like super quick, but if you have a bigger project, this might take a bit more time so you can see it's done. And now that that's done, you'll now see this pain here called the organizer now if you lose this pain it's fine don't worry i got you we're gonna get it back but all you need to do is go to your window here again and then go to organizer and then you'll now see that you're able to go to this pain again and you'll see the drop down here where you can choose your app so we'll want to actually distribute our app so we'll click on distribute app here and we want to choose app store connect as the option because we want to send our app to app store connect you can see here distribute on test flight and the app store so we'll hit next and then we want to upload this, not export it. And now it's going to start to analyze our, you know, project. Cool. So you can see that we've got this screen. Like I mentioned before, if you haven't created your bundle identifier in Apple developer, it will do it for you automatically. And this is the same. So if you've not created your app in App Store Connect, it will actually automatically create this for you as well directly in the organizer. So that's what it's asking for here. So we're just going to hit next and that's going to create our app record. Nani? And you can see I've got a bit of a problem here. <laughs> so the problem I've got is that the name I've entered has already been used. So we'll go go back and we're just going to tweak this a bit to say my, uh, my own tips calculator. You shouldn't have to worry about this because you have not built this app. So now this should create the app for me after changing the name. Okay, cool. And you can see here that that's probably a good point to notice about how you can't have a app name on the app store with the you know same name. You have to be unique. And you can see here that we've got two options here for uploading app symbols and managing our version and build numbers. So all this means is that this one basically means that if you upload your app and you know you get crashes, you'll get crash reports. The second one means is that if you want Xcode to manage your versioning and your build number for you automatically. So we're just going to hit next to say yes. Then we want this to be automatically signed. And now it's going to start the process of uploading it. 
cool. And now that we've done that, we can hit upload. Cool. And as you can see here, we've now got another issue. So what's the issue that we have here? Well, this is the one thing that's actually caught me out right now. <laughs> and it cuts out a lot of people. You're actually not able to upload your app to the App Store unless you have an app icon. So what we're going to do is actually add an app icon to our project. And I've just got this app here called Bakery that allows me to generate, you know, random app icons just as like a temporary placeholder. So we're going to hit generate icons on this. And then in Xcode, I'm just going to drag this into my XC assets like so. Delete, replace this. Cool. And now I should have an app icon. Um, I know you could do the single size, but just for the purpose of this tutorial, we just go upload this and send it to test flight. So now we're going to do that step again where we archive it. And then we're going to try and send this again. So we'll hit next, next. Cool. And then upload that and then sweet and now that should upload without any issues so whilst this is uploading i'm actually going to show you how to manage your internal and external users and also some best practices as well so make sure you stick around for that but first like the video and comment as well on any test flight topics that you actually are interested in or there might be another ios topic that you're interested in me doing a video about so you can see that this is now done so that's all sorted. So what we want to do now is actually log into App Store Connect and actually see our app. So now we're at the point where we can actually invite our users to our test flight build. Now I've logged into my App Store Connect here and we want to go to my apps and we should now see our app here. So my own tips calculator, we click on that. And then now that we've done this as well, we want to go to test flight and it might take a while but your build may still be processing depending on the size of it but because it's quite small it's pretty quick but you'll see this little like you know warning sign here and what this means is that we need to actually manage the compliance to make it available for people to be able to test this build so in order to make it available hit manage and then you'll see these options to do with encryption. Now I'll be honest I'm not a lawyer like Annalise and how to get away with murder so <laughs> it, I if you're doing some kind of encryption, then you might want to do some research into this. If you're not doing any, any kind of encryption, then you don't really need to worry about this at all. So I'm just going to hit none of the algorithms mentioned above. And how good is How to Get Away with a Murder as a TV show? I love that, man. But anyway, back to this. <laughs> so now our build is available. But if you actually look at Test Flight, we actually don't have any kind of information in terms of, you know, allowing people to test this build. And when you're working with builds in test flight, there's two ways to test it. So like I mentioned before, there's external and internal, but what's the difference? Well, the difference, the first difference is with internal testing, you only have limited to 100 spaces for someone to test your build. Whilst compared to external, you actually have 10,000 spaces. But with external testing, there's a small caveat. Now the small caveat is that you actually need to submit your build for review with Apple before it can become available for other people to test it. So once you do that, there's two options with external testing. Once it's approved by Apple, you can either generate a public link, which I'll show you later on at the end of this video. And also as well, you can just invite people with their email so they're able to access that build. So now you have 10,000 slots. Another thing to note for both external and internal is that builds are only available for 90 days. So you've only got three months to allow someone to test a build. So make the most out of it. <laughs> but it's not a big deal. You could just upload another one, right? But you're probably wondering, okay, when do I use external and internal, like in what scenarios? Well, in my opinion and in my experience, I would only use internal testing if you're some kind of corporation. So if you're like an agency or a team that has a small test team and you don't want to slow down, it makes sense to have internal testers so they can just, you just invite them to your team and they can just internally test the build. Now, if you're someone who is a indie developer and you want to have a lot of people test your app, then you probably want to go with the external route because you basically have like 10,000 slots available. So, best way to look at it is that if you're a corporation, you have a small QA team that you work with, I would stick with internal. If you want to have a wide range of beta testers to basically test your app, then I do external. So the first example we're going to look at is how we can invite, you know, users using internal testing to this build. Now, the first thing we'll need to do is actually create a group. So we're just going to create a group called my testers and then hit create. And then now we're able to actually add people and you should see you also get another plus button now for external, which we'll get onto later. Now we want to go to users and access 
and then we want to hit the plus button here and now we're able to fill out the information here to invite someone to a build now it's worth noting that you probably want to use a email that's associated with an apple id here so that they're actually able to use the apple id associated with test flight on their device so make sure the email you get from someone is an Apple ID. Now I'm gonna use a temporary mailbox here just to show you what this email looks like when you send this invite. But when you're working with this, you actually need to send two invites. So the first invite is to the team that you know someone needs access to. And then the second invite is to the actual test flight build. So I'm just gonna put in here, you know, dummy user two. And then the email here is going to be this. Now, in terms of roles, personally, in my opinion, I just like to give people the role of marketing. Unless someone specifically needs to manage bills, they don't need anything higher. And then they don't need, you know, access to all this stuff if they're just a tester. And then you can choose here what apps you want someone to specifically get access to. I'm just going to choose all apps. So we'll choose invite here. And then this will send an invite out. So now if I go to my temporary mailbox, I should see that invite come through any second now. Cool. And now you'll see that this invite's come through. So if we click on this, you should get an email telling you to accept an invitation to join that team. Now, if I click on this link right now, it isn't going to work because this isn't a Apple ID email, but it's just to show you what the email looks like. Now, once someone accepts your invite, you should then be able to actually add them to your build. So if we just go back to apps and someone's accepted the invitation in that email I showed you before, what you should now be able to do is in the group, you should be able to actually click the plus button and actually add them to, you know, the build. So if I just hit this here and choose add, what will happen now is you'll actually get another email and I'll put that email on the screen for you to see here right now. And then this email is the email that they will use on their phone to accept the invite and open up the test flight app installed on their device. So again, make sure that you use an Apple ID for the invite and that they have test flight installed on their phone to basically make this seamless. And that's all that is to it in terms of internal testing. So if you have an internal QA team, that's why this makes more sense. It's pretty straightforward. Now, if you're going to do an external, you know, build, cause you want external testing, it's a bit different, like I said before. So what you're actually going to need to do is actually submit this build to Apple. And it's worth noting that submitting a build to Apple can take two hours to maybe five days. It just depends on what mood they're in. <laughs> so keep that in mind. So in here, we're going to hit plus and we're going to create a new external group. So we're going to go to say my external testers and then we'll hit create. And then when you do this here, you're now actually able to select the build. So if you scroll down, you'll see here, there's a plus button to select the build you want. So if I hit the little plus button here, I can choose the build that we've uploaded and then choose next. And then we're going to need to fill out all of this information um, for Apple to basically be able to test the build. Now, in my opinion, you want to be as detailed here as possible. So I'm just going to fill this out and then we'll break it down. Okay, cool. Now, in my app, I don't have any signing required, so I don't need to fill this in. But if you're someone who does have a like some kind of like authentication screen or, you know, someone can log in and whatnot before they can use your app, like, trust me, <laughs> create a demo account, create a demo account so you can give it to the Apple tester so they can log in and do what they need to do. Because if not, they're not going to register and create a new account and just go reject your build. So make sure you do that. Now, I don't have that, so I'm going to take that off and then choose next. And then in here, we can write out information about what we want someone to specifically test. So if you have a feature that you want someone to specifically look for and look at, you want to put that in here. I don't, so I'm just going to put, you know, nothing to test. But obviously fill this out with the information you want. And then now we can submit this to review. Now, at the recording of, at the time of this recording, I don't expect this to get approved because normally this takes around like one to two days for it to get approved. But what I do have an example of what this looks like when it has been approved. So I'm just going to go to a different app that I have. And this app is actually part of a core data course that I'll put on the screen here if you're interested in learning how to build this. But if you go to this build here and test flight on the external testers, 
you can see that I actually already have a build that's approved before and this is what it looks like now. So if I wanted to, because this build has been approved, I can actually invite people by add new testers. So I'll go here, add new testers. So I can actually start to put their email, first name and last name, and they'll actually get an invite to this build so they can actually test out this build for us. Now, if I don't want to have to manually input all these emails and whatnot, instead, what I can do is actually enable a public link. And what this means is now anyone with this link can actually download the build via test flight. So I just need to share this to the people and they can download the build and that's it. Let's go. Okay. So now you should actually have your build ready for, you know, your testers, but you might be looking at me like, bruh, I don't have any testers though. <laughs> don't worry. I got you covered. If you're actually struggling to find testers, actually check out this video on the screen here to my right. Yeah, my right. <laughs> check out this video to the right here on my screen. It actually goes over ways you can actually find testers, you know, for your app. And also as well, you want to check out the test flight playlist here to learn even more about test flight. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.